Hey everyone, I'm making this video because I just finished reading the book How Google Works by Eric Schmidt, the CEO, former CEO I guess of Google. Is he the former? Yeah, Eric and Jonathan Rosenberg. And there's a lot of great stuff that I took out of this book. I really recommend it if you are trying to learn more about business, especially in our day and age. How Google Works isn't a technical book about Google about the technical stuff of how the internet works, but it's more just how they have become successful as a company. And <clears throat> really enjoyed it. I read it in about a week and a half. It was so good. But I want to share with you just my top three things that I took from it that I think are going to really help uh, not only myself, but anyone that's wanting to start any type of business right now know uh, kind of give you a better direction on how to be successful at that. So the very first one uh, has to, to do at the actually very end of the book here, uh, near the conclusion section. And I'm just going to read that for you. It's one paragraph. So it says, the perfect is the enemy of the good. Steve Jobs told the Macintosh team that real artists ship. New ideas are never perfect right out of the chute and you don't have time to wait until they get there. Create a product, ship it, see how it does, design and implement improvements and push it back out. Ship and iterate. The companies that are the fastest at this process will win. Enough said, ship and iterate. So that's the first one that I really liked. Ship and iterate because oftentimes we think too much and that's why Steve Jobs said that perfect is the enemy of the good. So making this video, trying to get it out there. Hopefully I'll be able to get better at doing YouTube. So the second thing that I liked in here uh, is found near the beginning of the book. These next two are in the strategy chapter. And the first one, or I guess number two on my list of three, is technical insights. So technical insight. Whoa, where'd you go? There you are. Okay. I'm going to read you a little story from uh, Larry Page and Sergey, the two founders of Google. So it says here that basically uh, Larry and Sergey, they entered into another search browser uh, university and it pulled up like a bookstore or maybe a bike store, not something that was super related to university. And so they're like, hmm, this should not be, it should give us what we're searching for. So the technical insight that they found was it says here, Larry and Sergey discovered a better way. They figured out that they could determine the quality of a web page, how relevant its content would be in answering the user's query by figuring out which other pages link to it. Find a page that a lot of other pages point to, and you have probably found a page with higher quality content. So that was their technical insight. Now let's talk more about why Eric Schmidt and Jonathan say technical insights. And they come back to this idea repeatedly in the book about technical insights versus market research or competitive advantage, distinctly different. So they say <clears throat> uh, product leaders create product plans, but those product plans often, usually, exclamation mark, lack the most important component. What is the technical insight upon which those new features, products, or platforms will be built? Question mark. A technical insight is a new way of applying technology or design that either drives down the cost or increases the functions and usability of the product by a significant factor. So there's two key things that make a technical insight. Uh, sorry, prefacing those two things is that it's a new way of applying technology or design. So you got technology or design. Uh, and it either drives down costs or increases the functions of the product by a significant factor, probably 10x or by an order of magnitude better. The result is something that is better than the competition in a fundamental way. The improvement is often obvious. It doesn't take a lot of marketing for customers to figure out that this product is different from everything else. Now, when I first read this to one of my friends that I work with, he said, oh yeah, that's competitive advantage. <laughs> but they continue on here. It's kind of funny. 
They say sometimes developing technical insights is simple. OXO built a business by ergonomically redesigning kitchen tools, but more often it's hard, which is perhaps why most companies don't make it a foundation of their strategy. Rather, they follow the conventional MBA approach of figuring out what they are best at, their competitive advantage, <laughs> per Michael Porter. And there's a quote by Michael Porter. So they're just constantly bashing MBA business people in this book. It's funny. Their whole thing is uh, Google based on smart creatives, these people that are technical and have the business savvy. But they start with this technical insight. So anyways, uh, so rather they follow the conventional MBA approach of figuring out what they're best at and then leveraging that to expand into adjacent markets. Okay, this approach can be very effective if you are an incumbent that measures success in percentage points, but not if you are trying a new venture. You will never disrupt an industry or transform your business and you'll never get the best smart creatives on board if your strategy is narrowly based on leveraging your competitive advantage to attack related markets okay so again technical insight different from competitive advantage technical insight is using a new a new way of applying technology doesn't necessarily need to be new technology but a new way of applying technology or design that one drives down the costs or two increases the functions and usability of the product by a significant factor. Excellent, so we've got ship and rate, technical insights. Number three, this is my third thing that I took from how Google works, was the most successful leaders in the internet century will be the ones who understand how to create and quickly grow platforms. Okay, platforms. When you hear platforms, what do you think of? They got a different definition for it. Okay. A platform is, comma, fundamentally a set of products and services that bring together groups of users and providers to form multi-sided markets. Okay. What's a multi-sided market, you might ask? Well, they explain that too. A place where two or more distinct users, user groups, can connect and provide each other with beneficial services. For example... Newspapers are a good example, connecting readers and advertisers as our credit cards, consumers, and merchants. For a more detailed description of platforms and multi-sided markets, see Thomas Eisenman, Jeffrey Parker, and Marshall blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you got multi-sided markets, two user groups. They go on to say, platforms are increasingly, if not exclusively, technology-based. For example, YouTube. YouTube is a platform... Okay, that lets anyone create videos, like I'm doing right now, and distribute them to a global audience. Uh, or in most cases, just a familial one. Or a classic example is a telephone whose platform, the network of wires and switches, that connects devices and lets people talk to each other, was pretty worthless when the first phone was connected to it, uh, as there was no one to call. But as each additional phone was added, the network became more useful to everyone who used it, since there are more people they could call. So, there it is. That's the third key insight that I took from this book that I think about now when I'm thinking about business or what I'm doing is, am I, how can I make this a platform? Because he goes on to say, later on talking about platforms, uh, what does he say here? Mm. Ah, there's another important benefit of platforms. As they grow and get more valuable, they attract more investment, which helps to improve the products and services the platform supports. This is why in the technology industry, companies always think platforms, not products. So platforms versus products in technology. Okay, so again, to reiterate, How Google Works, fantastic book. I What I do to help me um, remember key points that I liked in the book is at the very back, if you just make a list with the page number of key things so you can get back to them real quick. But those are my top three for you guys. Again, remember...
if you're doing business, perfect is the enemy to good. Ship and iterate, get it out there. Number two, focus on technical insights, not competitive advantage, they're different. And number three, platforms are king in the technology world. In today's internet industry, platforms are the ones that are gonna be successful in business. So, you wanna check it out, how Google works, recommend it, but thanks for watching, like the video, if you liked it, take care.